Really, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not giving you no half. <laughs> <laughs> seven, I think, is being a dreamer. But hey, some marriages, people just skate by and they never seem to hit a bump, but they're rare. How free from pain are you now in your single life? Um, well, that's, it's your answer. However you look at pain and pleasure. Probably five. Is it hard for you being single? Very new fashion. Class, how free from pain do you expect your marriages to be, or marriage in general to be? Ten, that means no pain. Nine, Depends eight. how compatible you are with the respect. Yeah. Seven, <coughs> six, five, four, three. Okay. You're a little bit above the curve here. And how free from pain is your life right now? Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six. And how many more people will benefit um, from you being married? I mean, will it help society? Will it help your church? Will it help community? Will it help the country? Will it help the world? Will your marriage help community, basically? Society. Um, I think it'll help raise the statistic of how many people get divorced or how many people. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. We all have to do 40 steps. Okay, so, so how high out of a 10 would you say? And 10 being like the world? Okay. Five being like everyone who knows this. Okay. <laughs> and one being no one. No one will be benefit from you being married. Um, or just you will benefit. Like a five and a half. Okay. And how many people are benefiting from you being single? Um, probably like a five. Say class. Same question. How many people would benefit from you being married? Friends, family, society. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay. And how many people are benefiting from your singleness? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three. Okay. <laughs> Will you do this poem for me? Will you do this poem, Will you do this poem? Okay. Okay, so Andrew definitely should be getting married. I mean, he has almost a two-to-one ratio of the value of getting married to not. The rest of you, you may want to look into other options. <laughs> because at least as a whole, as a consensus, there seems to be some problems with the idea of marriage. Okay, so I'm glad I could help you and look at that. No wonder half of the people get divorced, right? But isn't this nice? I mean, you can just plug these in, whatever your dilemma is, like where you're going to go to school, who you're going to marry, what kind of car to buy, whether to get um, cool ranch flavored or nacho cheese flavored tortilla chips. Whatever you want, you can plug into this scale. And in a lot of ways, like the supermarkets and other things, 
help you do that already. They give you price per ounce, but then you have to weigh in like, is this an off-brand? Uh, I don't like the packaging. Is this made in like some third world sweatshop? I mean, there's lots of different factors you can put into this equation. And you don't have to necessarily use these. I mean, you could come up with your own categories or the way you want to score it. And some of the complaints towards utilitarianism, of course, are like, who has time to do all this? If you have to make a flash moral decision, who has time to do all this calculating? Well, it's like anything else. The more you do it, the more you get in the practice of it, you'll like intuitively know how it's hitting those criteria. It's just like every time you get into an issue, and if you're a divine commander, you don't have to read the Bible every time you need to figure out something, right? Because you've been reading it, you've been studying it, it's in your head. It's not like you have to do it each time for each dilemma. And so with practice makes perfect, and you can always just vote. That's a really nice thing about this sort of thing. Um, society at large can vote on how it wants things to go. And it basically goes the majority rules. For example, um, in North Park area, probably it's been like 10 years now, um, Highway 15 used to stop in North Park. You had to go through city blocks with traffic lights for about 10 blocks, and then 15 picked up again. Well, they condemned like a 10 block area, and the government bought the people out. I mean, they didn't just take their property. They gave them fair market value for it. Most of it was an apartment, so you probably had some slumlords down there who got paid off. And it probably, and I mean, I don't know how many people live in a 10 block area, um, 10 block by two block area, but let's say 30,000 people or six, even 60,000 people maybe lived in that condensed area. Well, that was really inconvenient for those 60,000 people who had to find a new place to live, move, all of that. Maybe some of them had lived there for years. But what it ended up doing was, now that that 15 is complete, that probably saves 100,000 people a day, 10 minutes on their commute. And so you just do the math. 60,000 people inconvenience times three months, and 100,000 people times 10 minutes a day for as long as that freeway lasts. And obviously, it's doing a lot more people out of good than the 60,000 people who had to be displaced. And so that's kind of how it works. Now our country, I think, does a really good job in looking at the will of the majority, but also protecting individual rights. Because you can imagine how this could go poorly if it was simply about the majority rules. For example, this man went in to visit his friend in the intensive care unit, and his friend was horribly mangled from a car accident. The doctor assured him that even though he looked bad, he was going to recover, although he was going to need a kidney transplant because his kidney was horribly damaged. And his friend said, wow, that's really, really intense. And as his friend was about to leave, um, a couple doctors stopped him at the door and they said, sir, could you wait here a minute? And he said, sure. And there were seven other patients in the ICR unit. And the doctors informed the visitor that all the patients had gotten together for a vote, and they decided it would be better for that one guy to give up his organs so that all of them could live than for him as just one person to walk out of there well-bodied. Because one person needed a lung transplant, another guy needed a kidney, another guy needed some skin grafts, another guy needed a heart, etc., etc. But in our country, we're like, you have personal rights to your personal organs, at least now, for now. And so there has to be some sort of balance between, it's not just a pure majority rules, but it's like how does that